Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Aaron Trevino and we have, um, we have a guest here from down in San Antonio. Um, we have Steph from GoTime Realty. How's it going, Steph? It's going wonderful. How are you, Aaron? I'm just fine. I see you're in traffic. Yes, you know, with the, <laughs> we're always on the go. We, you know, we already know it's half of our time's in the office, the other half is on the go. Okay, very good. So, um, tell us a bit about yourself. What do you, what, what have you been up to? What do you do? Uh, lately, I have, like everyone else, you know, we shut down the office. If we do work from the office, it's only for certain, you know, things absolutely necessary. Uh, we have all adjusted working from home. And by now, tenants and owners and landlords know that we, we're at home. We're not not working. We're just working differently. But we're still available. We're still on call 24-7. So that's what I've, I've been doing. I set up my home office permanently. It's not just a laptop on my bed. Got a desk set up. Got, you know, a, a small space to myself so I can concentrate on work and that's the new way of uh, doing business now so were you you know where were you at before were you more driving to an office or it was and it, it makes it easier sometimes when with the office space because you kind of get up and you're in that world of monday through friday tenants and owners know you can reach us nine to five in the office come by swing by anytime you want call us, visit us, mail us. And then now that we're all working from home, we kind of have to remind people because they'll sometimes email or call and say, hey, I'm outside of your office, but no one's here. Well, we're not there. So you, now you've got to schedule appointments. So that's what, that's what we've been doing. And it, it was easy having an office, but I think we all are kind of happy not having to be open Monday through Friday, which our job <laughs> Our job never stops, but having those uh, banker's hours on our office helps. Yeah, absolutely. So if you could describe a bit, you know, what do you, you know, what, what do you do on a day to day or what are you, um, what are you looking to do in, in the future? Well, you know, with everything going on, our focus ha has changed, you know, not so much that we completely dropped what our responsibilities are to our tenants and our landlords, our owners, but as a business, we have asked ourselves, how are we gonna grow during this pandemic? How are we gonna provide service to owners and tenants during this? We have to make the change because you know, the tenants look to us for the answers and so do the owners they expect that we should know what's the next step legally what's the next step uh, in a humanitarian way you know when when we talk about listen we have a family that's uh, sort of suffering right now do you want to charge the late fees are you going to work with them do you want to go for the eviction do you want to sit tight and, and wait it out uh, they come to us for those answers so we have turned turned those questions inward and said, how are we going to change to be better and to succeed? Also on the investment side, you know, as a property manager, I, I don't do much with investments, but because we are the ones that manage these properties when they buy them and sell them, I have gotten more involved in acquisitions to make sure that the properties we are going to take over or that we want to purchase are not going to be a downfall for us in any way because right now it's a, a, hu a huge risk yeah absolutely you know especially you know kind of how things started in march it was a bit shaky people didn't know what, what was going on and then even you know even the the future of the market is uncertain so um it's a really interesting time But typically we would, my day would have normally started as soon as, you know, I get, I pull out the phone, check the email, <laughs> text messages, call employees, uh, just to see if any emergencies came up. And then when you hit the office, your routine, you know, processing whatever you need to process, reaching out to people. And now that we're not, we've broken from that, 
now we wake up and we're at home and some of us might have to make breakfast for the family before we even get started um, and then fi find a quiet space to work. Um, so that's the new struggle and, and that's what I've been learning how to do. But with that said, I love it. I love it because it, it has given us a break. We're so much concentrated on doing better, doing better than last month, doing better than last week, getting those doors, getting those investments, go, 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 go. We push ourselves so hard to be successful. And it is kind of nice to be able to step back and say that family is important also. Health is important. Uh, staying grounded is important. So those are some of the changes. My, my day has changed just a little, but I welcome it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, it's uh, a lot has been, been changing and will probably continue to change with the, uh, with the economy and the market. Um, you know, had you asked me, we're almost in August now, had you asked me about working from home back in January, uh, I wouldn't have thought about it because I was going to the office every morning, you know? Yeah, it's kind of un unheard of. I mean, most people, we have always have had the option to work from home, you and I. We don't necessarily have to go to the office, but I mean, that, that like I said, you, you push and you create a certain culture in your life and a certain way that you want your business to grow and be and um, showcase. And it is difficult to change from that because we, we try so hard to make it what our dream is. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I know you'd mentioned, um, I mean, obviously you work in property management. Um, so who do you, do you work mostly, you know, hand in hand with those investors and you mentioned how you're with acquisitions. So what do you, um, you know, what, what are you focusing on, uh, nowadays? Well, Going into March and April when, when we decided to work from home, most of my day was spent with maintenance, work orders, you know, um, tenant ledgers, rent collections. That was the main focus. I did not realize that it was going to shift so suddenly. And not only do I manage single family rentals, I manage a commercial property. Well, with all of this going on, the commercial property has taken 95% of my time. And oddly, the single families have not really needed me. Oddly, you know, we, we all did expect because it, it has hit families in, in the pocketbook. We did expect that we were going to have a high delinquency and a high turnover, turnover rate. And I'm glad to report that, you know, out of all the homes that we manage, I've only had one family that has actually moved out because even through working with the landlord and them, they just couldn't. And they would rather just turn in the home clean and close out the account than, than to drag it out. So I have not heard from the single families that much other than the emergency here and there. The focus has been commercial, which it didn't used to be. But I have, I, I have uh, 20 small businesses in that one commercial property, and I have learned the personal little shop owners on a personal level. You know, when you manage people, you kind of don't really get involved in their life, their day to day. You kind of leave it at a professional level. But with all this going on, I've had to ask the really tough questions. What are, what are you going through financially? What have you done to find the means, whether it's a loan, whether it's your PP, PPP? What have you done to be successful that, so that I can go back to the owner and say, let's continue, let's let them keep their shop and let's do this. I can't do that unless the owner has detailed information about their personal life. So here I am, not really knowing too much about these tenants, but now we're Facebook friends. And, and you know that's huge in, in our industry. We really don't commingle <laughs> with tenants, but we have become Facebook friends. We can see each other's family. Now the update on the emails is, good morning, Stephanie. I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope your son feels better. It's more personal. 
And in our, in our response, we aren't just, good morning, I, I need the copy of your insurance, please send it over as soon as possible. It's not so black and white. Now it's more human-like. Mm. That was a necessity. You know, it was hard to break into that and allow myself to open my personal life and to also deep dig into their lives. But you know what? All this is new territory for us. No one has really said this is the right way to do it. I think we all are just trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. And I have found, go, you know, with having to ask the hard questions and getting personal, it, we, we remind ourselves we are all human. We are trying to survive. They are trying to survive. At the end of the day, what's most important? That we're all healthy, that we're all happy, and that we treat e each other with respect and kindness. And if we stick to that, I think we all will do much better. But it, it was very, it's very shocking how things have turned out. And like you said, if someone asked me in February or March, do you think you would be closed, have closed the office this long? Do you think you'd be working from home every day? Do you think your kid would be home, you know, <laughs> with you every day? Absolutely not. We did kind of feel we, we would have control. And now we, we, it's uncertain. It is uncertain and no one can give us a very clear time frame on when all this is going to be over. And listen, for the property managers that are listening to me, that is our everyday life. <laughs> we are very much fluid people. We, as the, as the fires come, we put it out. We don't get all bent out of shape over things normally. So in a pandemic, it's it's our everyday life. Those stress levels that we're feeling, that's what we usually feel on, on a regular basis. It's just at a heightened level. But it's, <laughs> familiar. it's familiar. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, those observations you're making about, you know, not only the real estate market changing, but also it's almost like we're having a, a business culture change in, in a sense, you know? Uh, you know, I mean, you ask, you know, even you talking about the emails, people saying, oh, you know, writing you and saying, hey, I, I hope you, you and your family are doing well. Um, you know, you may not have seen much of that back in January. That's right. Yeah. But um, in terms of, uh, I, I know we talked a bit about um, kind of your, your day to day and, and what you do. Um, but you know, let, let's just assume that I'm an investor. I, you know, I have a property under contract. I just bought something, um, and I have no experience managing properties. I need, you know, I need a go-to gal. I need someone who's gonna, who's gonna know how to manage it. Um, you know, what, what do you think are, are some pitfalls to someone trying to take it on themselves as opposed to hiring uh, a manager? Well, the number one thing is, before you decide to take it on yourself and not hire someone who has some kind of experience with these things is assess your asset. Walk at yourself, look at every nook and cranny, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ask questions. The people that, that know about that property, if you have a few tenants and you're just taking over and, um, and you have the option to ask, what have you all seen in the last year what are some outstanding issues you have had over the last year that have not been addressed that's the biggest thing because if you know what you're dealing with then you can have an action plan if you don't take the time and you just stand back and say that building looks kind of great i think i can do this i i can work with it you know we're going to find a great renter and you don't really look under the rug <laughs> Yeah, and find yeah. if you have you know uh, water heaters that need replacing, roof leaks, window repairs. If you are not aware of these things, it could cost you a tenant in the long run, and it could cost you big bucks. So assess your um, asset first, and then decide. With all these issues that I know, throughout this year, I'm going to have to have a plan to knock this out and fix it. 
do I have the time and the knowledge to get this done or do I need, do I need a property manager? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I've, I've had a few friends who would try to take it on themselves. Um, you know, a, a good property manager is, you know, worth their weight in gold, you know, because they, they know the ins and outs, they know how to talk to, to the tenants, they know how the tenants think. And they know how to, you know, you talked about putting out fires, but a lot of times a good property manager will put out the fire before it even starts. Right. You know? um, and that, that's a huge thing because a lot of times um, some of the landlords or owners don't really have a year budget planned out. They don't know, okay, in six months I, I have a, you know, maybe I have this chill system that's about to go puts. And it's going to cost me 20 grand, but I don't have that right now, but I need a budget for that. A, pro a good property manager is going to say, going to let you know that chill system is going to cost you 20 grand and you might not have the money right now, but every month we need to make sure we're saving or we're not using that income so that we can do this in the middle of the year. You, you, with a good property manager, you have your calendar. Every month you have your business plan, you have what your budget is, and you stick to it. And along the way, of course, you're taking care of things that come up that are, you know, God sent. Um, but at least not, none of the major things that, that are known about are a shock to you. You are able to handle that. And there's a conversation about it so that you know what the action plan is when that time comes. So yes, property managers um, are very valuable. Also on the vendor side, because what we do as property managers, a huge part are our relationship with vendors. We know tons of carpenters, plumbers, make ready people, roofers. And if you're just putting your foot into this and you have not made relationships with trustworthy people, you might not get what you paid for and that could hurt someone really bad so these property managers have spent years making relationships with people that are trustworthy and that do excellent work and then we know for sure we're we're saving money and we're building we're building a great asset yep that that's that's definitely true you know it's um even for someone who's, you know, been, been in the business for a while or someone who's brand new, um, a big question that people have is, you know, not just getting one or two good people, but having a, a solid team around them. Um, one of them being a good property manager, but, you know, for someone just starting out, what do you think, um, you know, how, how do you even find a, a good team or build a good team? I have found it's word of mouth. And if you are coming into this and you know no one else in the industry, go to those associations, mingle, ask, who do you use? Who do you recommend? On a big project, who would, you, who would be your first call? That's where I would start. That's yep. where I would start because it, the, the proof is in the work. You know, the price, the owners want to say, oh, we're going to go with the medium price or the lowest price or the cheapest labor. That's not how you do it. You go by who does the best work. Sometimes you're going to get it at a great rate. Sometimes you're going to have to pay. Either way, you want it done right the first time. Yep. Yeah, sometimes they say, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure if there's a phrase for it, but, you know, you you pay for something that's cheap, you know, you end up paying twice, you know? Right. So yes. it, uh, it, there's a lot of truth to that. Yep. So I would start with the, with your local association. Um, even the national association, I have met people in Tennessee, but they used to live in Texas. And so even just having those conversations with people from upstates, They'll say, oh, well, I, I have a relative or I have a friend that when I was working in Texas, that's who I would use. So you got to mingle. You got to put yourself out there right now. Social media is huge. 
So if you know other real, realtors, real estate investors, owners, let talk to them. Open up those communications on social media so you can open up the conversation. People are, right now, people are learning the hustle is where it's at. We can't, right now, we can't just pick up the phone and, and say, we're going to find whoever we need. Right now, people are, are not working. You know, that plumber that you've always used for 10 years, he might be down three employees. And, hey, Steph, I can't get to you this week. It's going to take me three weeks to get to you. Okay, if you open up communication with somebody else, you'll find who other people are working with. And you always need that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that can that can definitely be frustrating if your your go to guy he ends up telling you you're gonna have to wait three weeks to a month to to get you know your project finished. Mm -hmm. And if if you start opening yourself up to other realtors, other investors, other owners asking questions who they use, who they recommend. Um, I don't think anyone would ever recommend someone that has really done wrong to them. Sure. They would probably say, hey, if you, if you come across so-and-so, I just wouldn't suggest it. They for sure would say that. So trust that. Trust other people who have had to write a big fat check to someone and are either really happy with that person or write a big fat check and say, you know what? I, it really irked me to have to pay for what that person gave me. They'll be honest. Yep. Yep. That's absolutely true. But um, in addition to property management, I know you said you're with GoTime. So are you an agent as well? Or you're, what are you focusing more on property management or? Right now our partnership is my broker handles all of the real estate side. I don't have, I don't, sell, buy, invest. Right now, my only focus in this partnership is property management. So anytime he acquires a new contract on a commercial or a single family, it comes straight to me. I learn about the property. I put it out there, take pictures, and the agents will find um, the tenants or sometimes they'll come online, you know, referred. Now, once that tenant or that prospect applies, I pick it up from there. Yep. I do all the processing, approvals, run it through the broker if we need to, run it through the owner if that's a requirement. And then I do the move-in process. I take care of anything after the move-in. And then if there's a move-out, I handle the move-out. So it really, in our partnership, we have found where our strengths are. My broker doesn't have the patience to be a property manager, and he knows that that's not his strength. So when we partnered, he said, you know, Steph, I know that you, if you do buy and sell on the side, I mean, that's on you, but I really would like to see you take over property management. I said, hand it over. Give me, all, give me everything you got. And, and you know what? It was really hard for him to trust because he had tried other property managers to partner with before. And like I, like I said, you know, in the property management world, if you don't have a lot of experience dealing with um, older properties, properties that may not have a, a great budget, and you haven't learned how to maneuver that, yes, it can be very frustrating. And you might think that you're the greatest property manager because you, you've had an asset that's been booming for five years. But when it's not booming, that's where the true test is. So I think a lot of property managers came and went with him and, and it didn't work out because when we hit things like a pandemic or you hit things where in your, in your own personal life, you're struggling with health, family, all these things that are coming at you, you've got to be able to trust your partner to say, Steph, I'm not at 100% right now. Can you pick up where I can? And vice versa. If there's a day that, that listen, I have a move in or I have um, a maintenance meeting and I can't make it, even though my partner 
doesn't do that on a daily, he still has my back. That is truly hard to find, but that's where we have found our balance. And it doesn't happen often, but that's how, what I focus on in our business. I focus solely on property management, even though I dip my foot in, in other aspects, acquisitions, investing, buy and sell. My main focus is just property management. That way everyone knows if it's a property management question, go to Steph, email Steph, ask Steph. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely interesting to see, um, you know, how the market has changed and you, you made a lot of really interesting points about um, even commercial versus residential. And before you said that, you know, 95% of your time is going towards uh, commercial. Why, why do you think that is? Uh, number one reason, uh, like I mentioned earlier, tenants come to us for the answers. You know, these shop owners, these little shop owners had, to easily put it, one of the tenants told me, Stephanie, last month, before the end of the month, I was getting ready to open my second location. I was investing in a food truck. I was thinking of, of building a new house for my family because my little business has done so well in this shopping center. He said, and then overnight, all of those dreams and plans went away. And now I'm trying to save just the one little thing I've got. And this right here feeds my family. This right here pays my mortgage. This right here gives me what I need to, to take my daughter to the dentist. Those $50 that people buy for dinner goes directly to me. And now that's in jeopardy. What do I do, Steph? What are the, what are the landlords going to do, Steph? Am I going to have to close my shop, Steph? And they want answers. So here we are where these tenants didn't really need to bother us for anything because in commercial, it, it sort of is very much, um, they do well. If the businesses are doing well, you get your money, things are taken care of, it's easy. It can be easy. Then you hit 21 people straight in the pocketbook, pull that rug from that rug of security from under them, and now everyone's in a panic. Everyone wants to know God's honest truth, Steph. Are they going to make me close my doors if I can't pay this rent? That, that, that's the bottom line. And that is how we had to address it with those. It's a partnership that, that owns that, the commercial property that I'm talking about. We had to go to both families and say, listen, we have 21 shops. Everyone has a different concern. Some can pay partial. Some can, can try to pay full rent as long as they can. But at the end of the day, day, they want to know how long do they absolutely have before we're going to put our foot down legally? Because you're talking about their livelihood, the future of their family, and they need to know. They don't want to be told a week before that, hey, we're, we're asking for the full payment up front or you've got to close doors. So that is the main reason why now it has taken 95% of my time because now I have 21 shops all coming for answers. And like, and like I mentioned before, as property managers, we're used to that roller coaster, but not on this level. Even we have questioned ourselves, is this the right thing to do? Is, what kind of message do we put out there? When COVID hit and we wanted to stay safe and say we're closing doors and maintenance won't be as available and there might be some things that we might put off until we figure out how we're going to do it, we also asked ourselves, is this the right way to go about it? How is everyone else communicating with tenants and, and landlords? Because we don't, we don't want to make anyone feel that we're not here to help. That's what we're here for. That's what we get paid for. We get paid to fix the problem. But somewhere in there, there's, there's that sliver of, I don't know the answer. For this, I don't know the answer. 
that's one of the main reasons why I started going to the national level and getting on these Zoom calls and talking to property managers around the United States was to find out, am I the only one feeling this uncertainty? Because I'm pretty confident in what I need to say legally, what I need to send out legally, and, and what we are legally responsible for. That I can do. But now with this, how are we all, how are we gonna do this? What do we say? And, and the other part is, even if it's legal, is it the right thing to do? Yeah. Is it the right thing to do to, to move these families out of their homes and push them out, even though we have the legal right? Where does our humanity step in and say, owner, tenant, we all need to come together. We need to have a real conversation and have some guidelines. Say, what are you willing to accept? What are you not willing to accept? And again, that sensitive subject, even though as if, if you're a property manager that still collects your own um, rent, you know how to, how to approach people when they're late or, or when you doubt that you're going to get that payment. You, you know how to have those tough questions and conversations, but not at this level when you bring a, a landlord and a tenant together and say, listen, this is an area that we've never dealt with before, and we want to be fair to everyone. And now we got to get to the bottom line. Take out, take out all the fluff, take out all the niceness, and let's make a plan. So that's where I find myself. And along, I'm sure with, along with other property managers, that roller coaster of emotion that we are used to on a daily basis, we can handle that. But again, this is on a different level. As a mother, as a wife, as a sister, a daughter, I still have these feelings of, my, I, I hear your story. I feel for you. I understand it is so difficult to choose. Are you going to close your shop or not? Are you going to move or not? And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other property managers out there that are feeling the same thing. We're used to it, but again, this is new. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely been a tough situation to deal with so far. Um, and, you know, again, it's kind of no one knows when this will end. Um, and even if we did have a, a time when it would end, you know, we don't know the other side effects of, you know, what will happen in the future. Right. Yeah. So in terms of, um, you know, I, one, one thing you mentioned earlier was uh, one word I liked was budgeting. And you had mentioned how a lot of people, you know, maybe they have a property or something. And, and the first thing you'd mentioned was that they wouldn't have had a budget or they wouldn't have had, you know, maybe a certain part allocated in their budget to do whatever it may be. Um, you know, what, what do you think would, would be, um, what, what do you think would be, um, I, I guess, maybe a, a good rule for someone, you know, who is looking to, to start a budget um, for property management? Well, you can do it several ways. I'm a, I'm a visual person. So whenever I acquire a new property, whether it's commercial or single family, I get my whiteboard out. I go, I visit the property, I take pictures, I take notes, print it out, and on my whiteboard, I put so that I can visually see, okay, I have, um, I have some drainage issue here on this house. I have a, a window leaking on this house. I maybe have a driveway issue on this house. In relation to how urgent are these issues and with relation to what I think it will cost, you start saying, what's my priority? What's the first thing I need to take care of? It, if you decide it is the drainage issue that you need to take care of first, you reach out to several vendors and say, quote me on this. Let me know how much this might cost me in the future. I'm not ready to do it right now, but I need to know so I can budget this in. And when I'm ready, I'll call you. You do that for every single problem you have on your asset. Then there's your 
there right there will give you half your budget because those are the issues that you will have to take take into consideration between your regular budgeted issues which are utilities maintenance costs taxes insurance all of these other things monthly that you have to pay out you find a month a certain month that you are going to have a goal to save towards to fix the drainage the window and the driveway yeah absolutely that was uh that, that was a great a great summary there but um so what do you make of the uh what do you make of the future of property management it kind of seems like you had gone through um you had kind of gone through uh you know a few of your experiences with you know dealing with people during the pandemic um do you think anything will change in the future of property management the one thing the one thing i thought would never change um before i managed single family and commercial i managed multifamily 250 units on average for 14 years and in that industry the main office is open either six days a week or seven days a week 9 a.m to 5 p.m rain or shine holidays <laughs> it yeah. just never closed when i was a property manager and again we're talking about budgets you would see payroll come in for all of those weekend hours payroll for all the holiday overtime pay and but we then also knew as property managers there was a whole lot of downtime during those uh, hours of six days a week seven days a week that our employees were not utilizing and I also used, I used to question the management companies that I worked with, typically the regional managers saying, can't I send an employee home? It would save on my budget. It would help them focus because this, this project I gave you doesn't take three days to complete. Yeah. <laughs> you can get it done in four hours if you concentrated. But because we sit back and we're on a 40 hour work week and you know it's not due, there's a lot of downtime. And the one thing I never, because everyone said no to me, the one thing I never thought would happen was, let's close the office doors, put the phones on answering service, let the girls work from home so they can have dedicated, concentrated time on their task, and then open up tomorrow. And now you have managers that are actually alternating employees, some are part-time some are full-time they take off as much time as they want you don't want to work today because you have to stay home because your child you don't have a babysitter for your child you know whatever the case is during the pandemic they're okay with that and i never thought the day would come where we would go to an office and the doors would be closed on, on a wednesday afternoon <laughs> but it here we are yep how about that how about that? You were ahead of your time. <laughs> well, only only because the 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 bottom line is we got to make money. And how if you're not if you cannot create income by by other things that you can be creative with, then you have to learn how to save the income you already have, which means cutting expenses. So that's where my thought process came in. Where can we cut expenses expenses? Hey, if our employees aren't aren't giving us a hundred percent, cut hours. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Or find new employees. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. That's tough luck for them. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, it's interesting how you you know you were kind of ahead on your time on this, and how we've gone through so many different transitions um, in the market, but um. Yeah, Stephanie, is there anything else that you that you'd, um, you haven't said that you'd like to say? I think I'd like to say that when I started in this business so long ago, <laughs> it we all know that it's one of those things you either love it or hate it. And I, I never thought that I would love it for this long, but it really is in my blood. If you are brand new to property management and you are feeling the stress and the uncertainty, the 
if you're at the point where you're saying, I don't really know if I can do this, you can. You can. Sit down, write your goals out, put a strategy on paper, stick to it, and wake up every day and expect to not know what's going to happen. Because you're never going to know what's going to happen. So already expect it. Wonderful attitude. I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Well, um, you know, where, where can we find you? Are, are you, um, you know, just, is there a link to your business that you'd like uh, for me to put in the description or how, how can we get a hold of you? Yes. So I work uh, for go time realty. That's G O T I M E realty. Um, but you know how I said in, in our partnership, I work directly under property management. So our management website is www.texasleaseup.com. And that's where you can uh, reach out to me, look us up. If you need uh, anything in Texas, we're here for you. Yeah. I'm available. That's what we're looking for, more investment. All right, terrific. Yeah, Steph, well, I've... um. I've really enjoyed that year, a wealth of information, and uh, that, was, that was very informative and awesome. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Take care. You too.